Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Weather Channel and it's all aboard the uncertainty train with the models today. Well this morning I should say. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever you are watching this and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the latest from the um, current trends from the models for the midnight runs, midnight set of runs uh, from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the ensembles, the UK Met, the Icon and also the Strat because oh dearie dear. As always, with a cold spell, we have to have some uncertainty. Now, we'll have to see where it goes from here, because there is some differences uh, within the models, um, even even up to 168 hours. Pretty crazy differences. Uh, so we'll have a look at everything. Firstly, though, I wanted to start off on the strat. So we're at 192 hours here. You can see um, this is for from the 11th of February. You can see that we have some warming, gathering pace, minor warming, gathering pace towards the north towards Siberia. And then we have obviously the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere, um, which is this big lobe of blue, which, you know, is quite strong. It's very strong and um, it's it's not decoupled, it's not stretched, it's not split. It's all, it's all together, it's all quite formed quite nicely. Now a, few, now, a couple of runs before, we were looking at the possibility of a strap split, so a sun stratosphere warming. The GFS does not make this happen. It does have a quite a significant warming. However, it does not display, it displaces the PV, but it does not split it. It all kind of stays together. So, therefore, it doesn't really change um, the patterns at all. It weakens it a little bit, and um, that warming dissipates very quickly, which is a big change on um, what the what these runs have been pumping out recently. It is um, it is a big change. So, I have to keep an eye on that with the strap, but that is very interesting to see that it has backed off the idea of an SSW. At least this at least this midnight run has anyway. We'll move on to the main models where the uncertainty truly begins. So who wants to join the uncertainty train? <laughs> All aboard the uncertainty train. Next stop is the UK. <laughs> right. Well, this is the UK Met Office, which runs out to 168 hours, so seven days. So as you can see, we've got high pressure by Thursday begins to ridge up to our northeast, bringing in the wind from a slack easterly flow. Even the potential for some snow showers in the south and east on Friday with the minus five line and a little trough. Um, high pressure then re-establishes re itself to our north, brings in another easterly flow. And by the very end, the minus ten line is covering the UK. Now, this is a big difference compared to a lot of the models. The minus ten line is covering up to central Britain there. Plenty, but probably quite a few snow showers in the in the south and east there on those cold easterly winds there. Pretty interesting. Obviously, um, closest to the high to our north like so Scotland and many parts of central England will probably be quite dry, but it will be feeling quite cold. If we have a look at the temperatures of the surface, this is a low resolution model, um, two or three degrees in the day, and that's the day before the cold even arrives, and then mid midnight on Monday, it, it, the country is countrywide below freezing, so pretty cold. Um, there, maybe even wintry in the south there. Now, there is a possibility of it snowing a little bit in the south and east, um, and east, through um, the weekend into Monday, but again, lots of uncertainty with this um, with this pattern. But I will say that the support for something colder on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, which could be a little bit wintry, uh, with a few snow showers in the southeast, the potential has increased. If we have a look at the icon next again. There's that westerly wind for the next for Tuesday into Wednesday for high pressure levels to our northeast. Then we bring another easterly wind, like a colder easterly wind, with the minus five line in. Could bring a couple of flurries to the south and east there. Um, then the heights build again to our north with a resurgence of high pressure building, bringing in another easterly wind with some colder air wrapped in. The minus five line could be bringing a few snow showers even further inland there. Pretty interesting. However, past this point is where it all goes wrong. So the GFS is going to show you what we don't want to happen. <laughs> Um, so, it has high pressure building to the northeast again by Friday, bringing in a colder easterly wind and maybe a couple of actually wintry flurries into the southeast there um, as early as Friday. And then, resurgence of high pressure to our north brings in that easterly again, but again, it's not as cold. There's not as much cold air wrapped in with the GFS this morning. Um, it did have a wobble last night um, as well, <laughs> to keep that in mind. By Wednesday, we are still keeping in the wind from the east with the minus five line which could be bringing some snow showers to many parts of the country, uh, especially in the south there, south and west, and, and the east as well. But um, many snow showers could be possible at this point, uh, but it's all about model watching. The only problem is, is that the heights are connected 
to um to a southern point. So they are connect they are heights are rising towards Scandinavia. You've got a proper Scandinavian high, but it's still connected. It's not split off from its main part, and this is where the problem lies. Now it stays connected and we stay on the mild side of the of the high pressure and we actually bring up a very mild southerly wind. Um, this would be like summers are, are here arrived. Like I mean, look at this. By the end of the run, high pressure is in a very unfavourable spot. It's trying to do warm air evection. Low pressures to its east, and look at all the cold going into Eastern Europe, Western Europe's on on the wrong side of the ridge, and very mild. Look at the extremely cold temperatures sinking into Eastern Europe. There, that is not what we want to happen. This is the problem. The GM though keeps keeps us um, keeps us all under control. By Friday, um, the seventh of Feb, we're still bringing in a cold east of the wind with the potential for a few snow showers in the south and the east, and then high pressure resurge just back northwards again. It's starting to actually that it looks like it's about to break off of this of this high pressure, keeping it keeping the settled weather going. Looks like it's about to get established between Greenland and Scandinavia and bringing a cold east of the wind. Obviously, that's some surmising, but you can see through the 12 hours before how the ridge was weakening. So possibly that one is going to go cold and wintry. Because look at all this cold air stored to our northeast by this point. That is pretty crazy. A lot of cold air. Um, so the GM still looks on board, but a bit iffy. And then the ECMWF, we're going to go to WX charts for this one so we can see the full view. And I'm going to move this as well. Haha. <laughs> So we'll go to the da -da 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 ECM and then that. I was going to show you the 10 day chart, but I can show you this on a different way. So again, it's very similar, it's just slightly differently presented, but I can still explain it the same. Um, so by the Friday of the 7th of Feb, again, that little trough developing to our southeast, wrapped in the cold air as the high pressures established to our northeast towards Scandinavia. You can see it there, established towards Scandinavia, bringing in the wind from a slack easterly flow, a little low developing in the flow, a little low in the flow, <laughs> and bringing in a little bit of cold air to the far south and east. Now as we go along with the ECM, again, keeps that high pressure attached to the south and um, doesn't build properly towards Scandinavia, meaning that we actually pull up some very mild southwesterly winds again. You can just see here on the temperature anomalies, we are actually bringing up mild air, in fact very mild air, um, there, an eye pressure kind of sticks around the country and topples away, which means that we stay quite mild, mild, dry, settled, whatever you want to call it, just very mild. Uh, we're bringing in the wind from a southwesterly, westerly. In fact, that's a southerly at that point, and that is very mild instead of very cold for that week. So, lots of uncertainty with this. Do not take anything as gospel at the moment. There could be some snow, and the potential does look there for some snow for. Maybe even of quite a few parts of the country, even up to central Britain, by as early as Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. But after that, I need to keep an eye on it. Hopefully, now my biggest hope is, I do think there will still be a cold spell. The biggest hope is that this um, discrepancy within the models kind of decreases. Like there's, there's still a lot of models going for it, and I'll show you with the diagrams. This is for Birmingham, the GFS ensembles. There is still a lot of runs. There's a, I mean, the GFS is one of the mildest ensemble members. But, you can see they have that cold snap, which is pretty cold. And then a lot of the runs are bringing it back to average or above, or even above average. Much quicker than it was scoped to, to do. Less of these runs are going down to the minus 5 line than they were before. If we have a look at the 12Z suite from yesterday, there is a lot more certainty, even if it were colder there. Some runs going down to minus 10, keeping it below average for much of the run. But the midnight runs are a little bit uncertain with this. There are still some. Some keeping it quite cold, and you know, the, the outliers. Hopefully, the trend is back cold again. Hopefully, this discrepancy, hopefully, this, this high pressure building to our east, uh, the discrepancy disappears, and we actually just have high pressure centered to Scandinavia, bringing in the wind from the east, or high pressure towards between Scandinavia and Iceland, bringing in the wind from the east or northeast, bringing some bits of cold air. But we'll have to wait and see. As always, it's the weather, so the weather will do what the weather will do. But I do actually think this discrepancy will be removed. But you've always got to put the chance out there. This could happen. That this is a possible scenario. Don't get me wrong. It'd still be quite cold, and there would probably be wintry potential even by the weekend. Uh, but it would just change things. Look at the snow for mon even up to Monday. Look at that for Birmingham. Half of the runs are going for well, almost half of the runs are going for a little bit of snow. 
long way off, uncertainty, looking a longer term, so much uncertainty, can't even look past about day five at this point without um, seeing uncertainty in the models. But we'll have to wait and see. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you found it informative and didn't talk too quick, then uh, make sure to like and subscribe for more. Uh, we're about about 12 subscribers away from 1,200 subscribers, so I'd greatly appreciate it if you considered subscribing. And I'll see you all in the next weather video. Bye-bye, everyone.